There's some steps that you can do to increase your likelihood of not getting knocked out, right? You gotta train, you gotta get in shape, you gotta figure out your opponent. Well, what does that mean? There's some actions that need to be required for you to have a successful retirement or to win that fight. Here's an example. So write down your goal, right? You're 85% more likely to achieve the goal that you want to accomplish if you just write it down. It is that simple. I don't care if it's on a bar napkin, right? You have a cocktail with a friend, write down your goal. I guarantee you, you will be more apt to accomplish it. So here's this individual's goal. You know what? I want to retire with $70,000 of income. They wrote it down. Set. Get a step-by-step -step process, right? How are you going to accomplish it? How are you going to achieve the goal? What actions need to be taking for you to get there? In this case, maybe they need to save 20% of their overall income to achieve that goal, right? They're starting writing it down. Second thing that they're doing is coming up with a roadmap, a game plan to make sure that they do it. And then hold yourself accountable. If I say, hey, I want to go in the ring with Mike Tyson and I eat potato chips all day and I don't work out and drink beer, guess what? I'm going to get my butt kicked. Same thing here with your overall retirement. You have to be held accountable. You need a coach uh, potentially. So hire yourself a financial planner. This is very self-serving, by the way, but you know what? You need it, Al. And Joe, I guess maybe to kind of make this more clear, let's go through an example. Here's a simple financial plan that you can put together. So this individual's goal again is they wanna spend $70,000. But let's just assume that they wanna retire in 15 years. You could be five years, it could be 10 years, 20 years, but you can follow the logic here. $70,000, that's in today's dollars. So you have to inflate what you're trying to spend today in the future. So in the future, that $70,000 given inflation, let's assume 3% inflation throughout that 15 year time period, the cost of goods and services that you're spending 70,000 today, well, it's gonna cost you about $110,000 15 years from now. Then do some research, figure out what is your social security benefits gonna look like? What's your pension benefits gonna look like? Do you have other types of income sources that are gonna come into the household? Write that down. In this scenario, $70,000 is what they believe is going to come in as fixed income. So I take 109,000 minus 70,000 is going to give you a shortfall. This shortfall in this scenario is roughly 40 grand. Start here. This is the first step of accomplishing your goal. This is, you know, start doing jumping jacks and right, jumping rope and things. Here, this is going to help you get there. Most people don't even do this, Al. Well, you're right. That simple calculation, I, I would say 90% of the people or 95% of the people that we talk to have not even gone through that computation. It's like, what do you want to spend? what's coming in in terms of, uh, of fixed income, what's your shortfall. And once you have a shortfall, now you can start to figure out what kind of nest egg do I need to be able to pay for that shortfall. Right, and so what do you do? How do you figure out what nest egg that you need? Well, there's something that's called the 4% rule. You don't wanna take out any more than 4% out of your portfolio. So in this scenario, $39,000. So I'm gonna divide this by 4%, all right? So most people don't know how to divide a percent into a whole number, so you can just multiply it by 25. So 39,000 times 25, I wonder what that number is. Let's see, well, it's $975,000. Wow, that's a huge number, but it's not as bad as you might think. So let's say this individual, it wants to retire, they need to get to this million dollars roughly. They have $250,000 in their nest egg today. So what do they need to do? Well, then you back it up and say, I got 15 years to get to this point. What do I need to do to get to this nest egg? Well, the number is about $16,000. If they can save $16,000 per year, and we're using roughly a 6% annual growth rate on that for compliance, well, 16,000 per year, 6% on top of the 250, guess what? They get to that goal, 975,000 bucks. If you can't save 16,000, maybe it's something less, maybe it's something more. If you can save more, guess what? That retirement date gets a little bit sooner. But Al, it's not rocket science. Yeah. You know, it's just kind of figuring out what are the steps that I need to take and then slowly try to achieve that goal. And it shows, Joe, the power of compound money because you think at 250,000, I'm never gonna get to a million bucks. And the truth is you can, because with a, even a 6% rate of return and saving the $16,000 per year, you can make that goal. Now you do probably need a financial calculator or a friend that has a financial calculator. It's not that tricky of a computation, but by knowing that, it can give you a lot of confidence that you can actually meet your goal. And Joe, I guess another thing really is then, once you know that 16,000, where the vehicles that you can save into.
Right. If you look at IRAs right now, you can save $5,500 still for 2018. You have until April 15th to make that 2018 contribution. But 2019, the IRS gave us a little bit more leg room here. So you can now have $6,000 if you're over 50 or $7,000 if you are over 50. Under 50, it's six. So 18.5 was the number last year. They increased it to 19,000 this year, plus another $6,000 catch up. So a little bit more room in these retirement accounts for you to start leveraging. Now, after tax accounts or just a brokerage account, there is no limit. You can save as much money as you want. So it's first identifying what you want to spend, right? What is the goal? Second, what do you have now? Figure out your fixed income sources, doing a little bit of computation, write it down. You will get there. I-